Hello, thank you for joining me for Give Him 15. Before I do today's post, read it, I'm going, I want to thank Cheryl Sachs for doing such a great job filling in for us yesterday and also thank her for her appeal to pray for us. Appreciate that. Anyway, we appreciate Cheryl. Check out her website and uh, order a book or two. And she's an awesome author and teacher and great prayer leader. Thank you, Cheryl. And the title of today's post is Let's Find Out. You would have to look long and hard to find anyone more passionate about seeing America reform than my brother, Tim Sheets. He seeks God diligently regarding what he is saying to the church and what is necessary in order for a reformation to occur. As you will see from this word, Tim is on fire for these things. He says, current events must be defined using God's truth. Demonic visuals and messages must be forbidden and resisted. We are to be a people who discern the times. Thomas Aquinas, a 13th century Italian priest, philosopher, and theologian, made this statement. He who is not angry when there is just cause for anger is immoral. Why? Because anger looks to the good of justice. And if you can live amid in injustice without anger, you are immoral as well as unjust. Strong words. Tim continues, it's possible to be angry and sin not. Anger at injustice is righteous anger. It's not love to wink at injustice. It is love to resist it. We are in an ideological war for this nation. Ours is a call to spiritual warfare, and it is a call to cultural battles. It is an ideological war against government and societal tyranny. It's a call to speak truth to abusive, lying power. The call of the ecclesia is to arise and make a stand against evil. The weapons God gave us are mighty, mighty through him to pull down strongholds. We are called to partner with him and stop corruption. It is time to stand against injustice. Recently, a shameful act of bullying by our government took place against a former president. This atrocity has never been done before in our nation. When I heard the news, he says, I was reminded of the things the Lord impressed upon me just before the event, just prior to the event. Leaders of some governmental agencies are about to panic, Tim heard. They will begin doing crazy things that will further expose their motives. In sheer desperation, they will lash out, but it, would only, it will only reveal more of their own wickedness and evil. And though they are too deceived to know it, their dictatorial actions and communist tactics will have been further exposed. He says many in governmental positions of authority are trying to cover up their actions and lies. God, however, spoke to me in a previous prophecy. I will pull the covers off of you. I will bury your plans. I will write with my own finger vanquished. As Jesus said in Matthew 15, 14, concerning the arrogant authority among the Pharisees, they're blind. But if the blind lead the blind, both fall in the ditch. He says there are arrogant, self-righteous leaders in America currently who are going to lead other blind and arrogant people into a ditch. When fools lead fools, wrecks happen. These leaders are too blind to see. They have just tipped a domino that will result in a cascade of falling dominoes. The serpent's head is coming off. First Kings 18 speaks of Ahab's and Jezebel's confrontation with the prophet Elijah. King Ahab and Elijah met, and Elijah 
proposed a challenge. An altar would be built and a sacrifice placed upon it. However, neither of them would light a fire. Each would ask for supernatural fire to fall on the sacrifice. Ahab's prophets praying to their God, Baal, Elijah praying to Yahweh. The challenge would prove whose God was truly God. The followers of Baal went first, praying from morning until afternoon with no results. Then it was Elijah's turn. Immediately, the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed the offering. The challenge was over. The Baal workers supporting Jezebel were removed. This passage of scripture reveals that God has removed Baal's influence from governments before. I believe he's going to do so again, Tim says. The day of reckoning is here. The hand of God is about to interrupt their party. The desecration of God's laws and statutes will not stand unopposed. The almighty king is going to stomp the head of Leviathan that is slithering through government departments. His days in our government are numbered. As I have prayed into current events, Tim says, the Lord spoke to me. The ecclesia must partner with Holy Spirit, allowing him to lead in an aggressive battle plan. This plan will end in great deliverance, great reversals, and great victories, and will begin the discipling of nations. We must embrace this assignment. In many ways, our nation and way of life depends on it. Clearly, doctrines of demons are prevalent in our land. Antichrist culture is being actively promoted. Christians are being persecuted and our values are being vilified. The church has been described by some government leaders as non-essential. The war against Christ's kingdom and ecclesia is real and is intensifying. But we are not without hope. We have everything we need to prevail and turn this nation around. I believe the glorious ecclesia is rising just as God's word said it would. The kingdom of God is amping up like I've never seen before in order that Christ's purpose on the earth can be established to achieve this, we must do things God's way, following the patterns and principles of Scripture. Sadly, we have too often seen nominal churches and shallow Christianity being promoted by scared leaders. Obviously, this will not work. It is actually part of the problem. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to run from our adversaries, nor to be silent. We must not compromise, bow to fear, or cower to any challenge of our faith. As Christ's ecclesia, we must raise our voices, make a visible stand without compromise, and be strong in the Lord. We must bring clarity and proper definition to culture. Challenged by an in-your-face attack from hell, we must respond by being real Christians, not religious pacifists, trembling in fear from loudmouthed devils. There is a remnant in the church, he says, that has heard Ahab's defiance long enough. They're ready to rise up and do things God's way, declaring, let the God who answers by fire be our God. If Baal is God, we'll serve him. If Yahweh is God, we'll serve him. Let's find out. Let's find out who the real God is. Jesus said hell's government would not prevail. Let's find out if Christ is big enough to back that up. I'm confident that he can. God said he would watch over his word to perform it. He said he would cause us to triumph. Let's find out. Let's find out if the name of Jesus is greater than any other name. I'm confident that it is. And I say amen. 
Let's pray. Lord, break the darkness, break diabolical structures and send your supernatural light. We decree this is your nation and the recent schemes of our government will backfire in historic proportions. In the name of King Jesus, treacherous back strategies will backfire, misfire, and boomerang. Battering ram angels are knocking the props of Baal out from under those who oppose you. Cause your power to rise in this nation. Motivate the ecclesia to raise her voice. Grant that boldness will be upon us to speak the name of Jesus and the words he gives us. Give us signs and wonders. Show your mightiness. Clothe, close the mouths of the prophets of Baal. Let righteous rulers arise, declaring you are God. Answer with fire. May the entire world see who the true God is. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Our decree, we decree that Baal will be exposed in the government of America. God will answer by fire. Amen. And so be it. Well, today's post was contributed by my brother, Tim Sheets. And we've provided a link here where you can learn more about him. Get one of his great books. Get on his mailing list, etc. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. And I'll see you tomorrow.